One, I said, oh, let's go high risk, whatever. And I breached yeah. it in like three days. Oh yeah, uh, be patient. Nobody wants to hear that. And <laughs> I didn't want to hear it either. Hi, Pierre. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How about good. you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Thanks for uh, doing the interview. Um, if you could just introduce yourself to the community, tell us a bit about yourself, where you're from, how long you've been trading. Yeah, sure. My name is Pierluigi. I go by Pierre. Uh, I'm from Italy, from the small region of Abruzzo, city of Pescara, beautiful place. <laughs> uh, I I come from a scientific background. I used to work in uh, clinical research up until a few years ago. And I started trading. It's been less than one year and a half, actually. So, and um, trading CFDs and Forex for less than one year. So, mm -hmm. I'm, I don't feel an expert by no means, but I'm content <laughs> with what trading has been giving me so far. Okay, it's been good. a great journey. Great. Okay. So, what brought you to trading? Oh, I was really big into NFTs and at some point I stopped making money out of NFTs and I had to find another way to survive <laughs> and there were a few groups, <laughs> yeah, there were a few groups that were trading cryptos so I was introduced to trading by these crypto traders, I was initially like copy trading them like everybody does, you know, you don't know anything, you just want to make money and then uh, as I started digging deeper into the rabbit hole I learned about funding companies. I started taking trading way more seriously. Uh, and here I am right now. Okay, good stuff. All right, okay. So you say you're an FX trader and a CFD trader. So what, indices and FX? Yeah, mostly mostly indices. Uh, you, I trade mostly the S&P 500. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I would say only, I, I took only trade on the S&P 500 on my funded account so far, so. Yeah, okay. Always best to specialize in one particular asset. Okay, so you chose the US 500, right? Okay, so you tr do you trade, I assume yeah. you trade the New York session? Yeah, yeah, I trade the New York session. Okay, you wait uh, for the usually, open? Usually, I, I could be trading. Yeah, yeah, I wait for the open. Uh, I also wait for the equities open at 9.30 a.m. Uh, I trade mostly the morning session. Sometimes yeah. the trade can carry over into the PM session, but I very rarely take a trade into the PM session. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's wise. AM session new. normally easier to trade than the PM session. Um, certainly gives a bit more volatility. So I take it you're a day trader then? You're in and out in a day? Yeah, yeah. I most. I I don't like to hold trades overnight because yeah. I like to reset my mind every day and see what I get. I trade just yeah. the session, so most of the time I want to be out by the end of the session. Yeah, safest way to trade, certainly at the moment. Um, okay, so any particular strategy you got a? Can you share a screen? Yeah. Maybe give us an example of a trade setup. Yeah, definitely. I'll show you a trade that I took yesterday on my uh, on my account. So, and I will show you the strategy as well. It's mm, I am a discretionary trader, but a rule based discretionary trader. So I have my checklist my, for my A plus setup that I've been back testing and live testing thoroughly. I have a good amount of data, so I feel pretty confident in my strategy so far mm -hmm. and I stick to it then again as long as it works out I'll, I don't see why changing uh, what works for the moment no, no, just no. give me a second so no no worries if you found a system that works oh. certainly stick with it um... One thing that I learned in the markets is that there's always opportunities. So oh, there is yeah. no need to uh, chase, you know, yeah. there's always the next one and the next one. I'm going to set the replay to yesterday. So I'll show you the way sure. I go through the market. So here's my checklist. I mark out the key areas. The I am an ICT trader. 
I, uh, I see that by the, yeah. Uh, yeah, I see that by the uh, the key there. Yeah, ICT twenty twenty two mentorship. You've watched it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, uh, I watched it on YouTube a couple of times. Took notes. I've been watching a little bit of his playlist. Uh, mm. I mean, I've been following also a little bit of the twenty twenty three, but the twenty twenty two is where I grew up. Let's say and developed my method and. Yeah. Mm, I've been able, you know, I've been putting a lot of work of backtesting to make sure it works. That And that also gives me the confidence. I'm showing you an ES chart, a futures chart, because yeah. every CFD broker has, you know, some different... different uh, no, no, yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, no, I agree. No. ES, ES is the CME futures feed for US 500. Yeah. Yeah. So... Here was the buy side liquidity yesterday. So this, mm -hmm. was, this was the yesterday, trade. I, yesterday's high, was it? Monday's high? Yeah. Mm -hmm. this, this was Monday's high, yeah. And the sell side liquidity, liquidity was uh, the London session low for Tuesday. Okay. 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 So, um, so uh, I want to make sure I'm in a killed zone. So I'll mark the vertical lines here 12 all right here so i want to make sure i have a bias i was short bias because in the uh, even though we were ranging you can see on the higher time frame in this case i'm using the four hours we are uh, heading lower oh yeah and we're heading there's lower. a, we're heading a lot, lot lower yeah <laughs> yeah there's a lot of talk we can do about mm, developing a bias and finding a direction, but mm, you know, mm -hmm. trend is your friend. This is one thing that has always mm -hmm. helped and has proved up, mm, has proved to be true. So I try to trade with the trend whenever possible. So here's the main conditions. I want to see a sweep of the liquidity. So yep. here's our sweep. Let me see if I can mark it up. There you go. Here's our drawn liquidity. Then I want to see a market structure shift leaving uh, um, a fair value gap and an order block. I usually take trades from the order block. So I set my limit here at the order block. Right. Uh, so that green up candle, that's an order block to use. Exactly. It? Is the the last, mm, uh, in this case, the bearish order block is the last up candle that pushed the, uh, the price down. So okay. There you go. Here we have our break, the break of market structure in this case one was on the five minutes. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. Break it was a break of once we, market structure. That once we what, and trade then or, I want, mm -hmm. Once we trade or close below a swing low? Basically, yeah, exactly. Once the, the direction reverses, you know, there was this wing low, swing high, and then this wing low was broken. So it was putting on swing, higher highs, higher highs, and higher lows. And at this point, yeah. it broke this low. So mm -hmm. I, and it took the liquidity up here, the buy side liquidity. So I was expecting price to head down lower. So this is the trade I didn't take. You can see it here just by one tick. <laughs> and then <laughs> the actual trade then, I took was the opposite side. Uh, mm -hmm. My strategy, it usually works on the uh, four hour and one hour as the um, uh, analysis time frame and the 15 minutes as the execution time frame. But I've been also experimenting with the uh, uh, lower time frame, so using the 15 minutes and one minute as entry, even though I do not recommend it. I'll, I think the 15 minute works great for almost everything, you know. Uh, you can take quick scalps, you can, for, for day trading, maybe not for swing trades as much, but it gives you a good idea of what the price was doing. So here, similarly, I waited, basically, in this case, I looked, I was looking for a balanced price range and an inversion fair value gap. So right. here was my entry, basically. Uh, I set up a limit here and I took this trade on my funded account, on my live account. Basically, I was targeting the order blocks up here. Okay. I usually go for two risk to reward when I'm in a heavily trending market. I try to push for more, but there you go, pretty smart. Mm -hmm. So you entered on that pullback into that BPR? Exactly, exactly.
here on the 15 minute. I, I had two entries after, actually. This was the second one. The first one was around here. Same, uh, same reasoning, same line of thought behind it. Just lower time frame, a little bit more risky. I was with half my risk. I risk, mm, try to keep my risk contained on my funded accounts. Uh, I usually risk 0.4. And for this trade, this execution on the one minute, I was risking 0.2%. So, mm -hmm. okay, good risk, good risk reward, sure. Okay, all right. So, and you just trade during the New York session, probably just the AM session. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sometimes like yesterday, I was at the PC, as you can see, it was mm, the trade was during the lunch session yeah. mostly mm -hmm. because I I was. You should do. But after missing that one, I was like, oh, I cannot miss this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been able to be more patient today. Did so you get a trade today? Uh, actually not. Actually not. I it was, was very, looking. It was quite aggressive this morning, wasn't it? It just sold off quite yeah. quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't expecting it, honestly. It took me by surprise. I was expecting price to not be as aggressive as it has been today. Let me see. All right. Just just sold off, didn't it, this morning? Just broke yeah. straight back down. Yeah. We keep, we keep moving lower now. Yeah, I was targeting the, here this order block, this small, mm -hmm. tiny one, mm -hmm. but uh, above this fair value gap, but the price just mm, mm -hmm. rebalanced here and went without me. It is what it is. You cannot mm -hmm. take yeah. them every day. I, I average like 10, 12 trading days a month. So. Yeah. I will not get a trade every day and I, I'm okay with that. As I was saying before, being uh, in a hurry never helped me in my journey so far. So. Oh, no, no, no. Patience is a blessing. So just to give you a little tip when it comes to order blocks, order blocks, they must push into liquidity to be an order block. Okay, so an up, candle, an up candle, which is a bearish order block candidate must form in liquidity okay so it must take out a high okay 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 and otherwise it's not an order block so just yeah, doesn't, yeah. all right just because it's the highest up close candle does not mean it's an order block okay so um just a little tip there yeah yeah all right i appreciate it yeah i usually don't like to enter into retracements for the block i like it i like them more for the expansion phase yeah so like I was looking to get a trade here around actually this imbalance here, mm -hmm. but of course price ran without me. So like, all right, maybe I could get this one and I didn't, I canceled my limit order. So I'm good for the day. Good, good stuff. Okay. Um, so yeah, so ICT trader, ES, so US 500. So and you enter on sort of five or 15 minute chart. Do you target a particular amount of points per day yeah i try to take two r i usually uh try two to r. take mm, about okay. yeah four four or five points of risk sometimes mm -hmm. i will take more if i think we're close to a liquidity pool and we're able to get it like i don't like to go all the way through so let's say here yesterday the trade that i showed you i wasn't targeting the buy side liquidity i was trying to take mm, enough to get to r and making yeah. sure that there was the space for price to expand and to go to that buy side liquidity. Yeah, yeah, I see. Good. Okay. All right. Thanks for sharing your strategy. Are you able to share your funded next dashboard? Here we are. So I have right now one 25k stellar funded account and one mm -hmm. challenge. This is phase one. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully I'm about to pass phase one and I'm trading the challenge very conservatively, mm -hmm. very conservatively as well. Mm -hmm. You know, you see a lot of traders saying, oh, I go more aggressive on the challenges and whatever. Yeah, I go more aggressive on the challenges compared to my funded accounts. Mm -hmm. But still, I found that especially, you know, I feel still like a fledgling trader. I don't have the experience that many people have. And I've noticed that uh, developing the skill of patience has been really, really helpful. So uh, I think... Mm -hmm. Like if I take 0.4%, I take just the same trades with double the risk on my challenge, but I don't go above 1% because, you know, there's no time limit. I'm not in a rush to uh, to be a cowboy and get the moonshot. 
uh, I just want to build my uh, my trading in a consistent way, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's the, that's so the goal. I will show you. Yeah, yeah. Can we see some uh, details? Yeah. So twenty six yeah, eight. Sure. So six trading days. You've already hit eighteen hundred profit. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, yeah. This this has been a good month for me. I already yeah. got a payout this month. I'm waiting for another one. So I'm content. Gonna enjoy my vacation <laughs> next week. Oh yeah, where are you going? Uh, to Bali. Oh Bali! Oh lovely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That should be a nice. Never relaxing. been there. Oh wow, well, you'll enjoy it. Hopefully that. not. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, here's the trading overview. Okay, win rate sixty three, loss rate thirty six. Excellent, and then risk reward roughly one to three. So yeah, perfect. Okay, gross profit two thousand, gross loss yeah pretty low. Nice. Yeah, good statistics. All right, I like it. Nineteen trades, and yeah, very good. Okay. Yeah, as you can see, I try to keep it small and yep. consistent, like chipping at my wins. Yeah, yeah, that's the way to go. Yeah, yeah, point four. Yeah. Lot. seems about right for a, for a twenty-five. I point. also try. I also try to make sure that I don't lose much. I set. Uh, like weekly losing limit and a daily losing limit for myself mm-hmm. so yeah. i know that i will not risk more than that and if i lose that it is what it is i will just switch to sim trading and yeah. or tape reading that's good advice yeah yeah maximum loss maximum wins um you happy with the i imagine you're happy with the spread with us 500 on yeah. funded next it's excellent isn't it yeah 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 it really uh it's really been fine as i said before i'm not as experienced to be able to compare it but so far it has never been it hasn't been giving me any problem it always hits my trade there is no slippage uh, or at least not a notable one so now i can tell you the the spread on us 500 and us 100 and the zero commission is as good as it gets in the prop industry so it's yeah it's excellent trading conditions especially on the mt5 server yeah uh, right yeah. okay glad, glad to hear you're happy with it any suggestions for funded next how they could maybe improve things oh there's just one thing that i was thinking of because honestly as i said it all it all has been so far a plus i had a great experience trading with funding next so with funding next the, there is the um, the payout you know where it automatically the money automatically gets sent into the payout pool let's say and i really love it but i think that you know having the possibility to have the choice to say oh let's leave it in into the account or so you can like based on the equity maybe put on more risk uh i see. will be I good as see. well you know yeah yeah i see yeah so to leave some of the funds in there maybe to give you an extra bit of cushion drawdown cushion yeah 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 yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's a good good suggestion. Maybe they'll take that on board. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. Okay. Maybe uh, do you have any suggestions to help traders who are struggling to get funded like you are? Oh yeah. Uh, be patient. Nobody wants to hear that, and I didn't <laughs> want to hear it either. So I know that. But that's that's the thing. It's like yeah, I I bought three challenges with funded next when I was starting. Right. Yeah. One, I said, "Oh, let's go high risk, whatever," and I breached yeah. it in like three days. Uh, wow. The other one, I said, "All right, now let, let's wait for the right condition, find the right trades, and and you know, trade it like it is my own money." So um, that was what really brought me into um, the right perspective. Because, you know, if this is my own money, I don't want to risk as much. I want to make sure that I make money. And I know that, you know, you can increase the funding you have with this funding company. As you can see, I'm about, I'm here on this phase one challenge. I'm like $500 away to pass phase one. And I've been trading it really, really conservatively because this, I was trying to trade it like aggressively initially too. And I went into a deep drawdown and I got back from like an 8% drawdown by just trading it like my own account yeah. with mm, reduced risk. And right now, you know, it sucks because everybody who gets into this industry, of course, wants the 
financial freedom that trading offers. But being patient will bring you really far in the journey. That's what I learned. And that's what I think helped me, you know, having decent results in, uh, compared to my small experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good advice. No, it's good advice. Trade the account like it's your own money. Um, yeah, take it a little bit more seriously. You don't want to, yeah, you wouldn't tend to quickly blow a five, five thousand dollars if it was your own money, would you? So now it's good advice. So uh, yeah. Okay, thanks, Pierre. Um, well, thanks for your time. Uh, enjoy your holiday in Bali, and uh, good thank luck you. with the twenty-five challenge. And we'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking with you, Simon. Have a good and one. You. Take care. Thanks, Pierre. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.